Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here in the Feast of Tabernacles and talking about earthquakes. Now, I was planning on doing a class about the 8th day celebration, the 8th day of Tabernacles. And, and Lord willing, I'll probably end up doing that class after this one. But while I was preparing my notes for that class, I came across Haggai in chapter 2. And I thought this is some very interesting, if not important, information to share with you guys. So in this class, I want to take the time out to talk about the 21st day of the seventh month and a word of the Lord that came to Haggai during that time. Now, before we get into it, I want to congratulate all of you individuals that are chiming in in the comment sections of our videos reporting rapture like experiences. People are talking about increased levels of intuition. They're talking about dreams they're having. They're talking about their conscience being awakened. Um, people are talking about answered prayers, even telepathy, increased knowledge and awareness, all kinds of stuff people are reporting during this seventh month, indicating that humanity is, in fact, waking up. I believe we are in the early stages of what they call the Great Awakening. But anyway, I planned on covering that during the eighth day celebration. Like I said, in this class, I want to focus in on Haggai and chapter 2, only because these days come before the eighth day celebration, the eighth day of Tabernacles. Now, let me give a little bit of my testimony here. Just a small aside note. About two years ago, back there and about this time in 2018, I found myself going through a moment. At that point, we had posted over 300 videos to our channel, but yet we wasn't receiving a lot of attention. It's like nobody really cared about scriptural knowledge. Biblical knowledge was then and still kind of is now of low value to most people, including a lot of professing Christians. And so I found myself out in the woods praying and meditating on the subject. And I was pretty much asking the father for something important to talk about. Of course, we are a scriptural based channel and I couldn't just go start making videos about cats and other furry animals, even though I know my channel would take off if I turn my camera towards these chickens and ducks and sheep here on the hillbilly homestead I knew I really couldn't do that so I was out there praying meditating and fasting asking for our father to give me something important to talk about well the thing that came to me during that time was earthquakes and it hit me like a rock the fact that this earth was about to go through such a catastrophic earthquake and I started doing research on the subject and over the course of a few weeks or though during my studies on earthquakes I came to the realization that it is during the Feast of Tabernacles that we would possibly see this huge earthquake and I started making videos about it. One of the first videos was that there would be an earthquake during the Feast of Tabernacles. And I mentioned in that video that although I wasn't sure what year it would be, I was sure that it will occur during the Feast of Tabernacles. And for those of you guys who don't go watch any of those videos, let me say it again that I mentioned in every one of those videos that I wasn't sure what year it would be. The only thing that I was willing to say for sure was that it would occur on the Feast of Tabernacles. But anyway, I'll probably create a playlist on those videos. Some of them are pretty funny. 
So let's jump over and let's look at just a few verses that should bring interest to the idea that we could have an earthquake, an earth shaking event that will occur during tabernacles. Now, it is not my intention to put anybody in a panic mode. It is my intention to draw your attention to this Feast of Tabernacles and how it is a required mandatory holy day, which really makes sense in light of a huge earthquake that we would be sleeping in tents. I mean, if an earthquake occurred while you was in a tent, chances are it would only knock a tent peg out of the ground. You would get up, straighten your tent back up and go back to sleep. However, if you was in a building made out of brick or even wood, it would be a much more catastrophic event for you during that time. But anyway... Let's jump over here and let's read Haggai chapter 2 right quick as the background verses for some of the other things that we'll look at. You see right there in verse 2 it says in the seventh month on the one and twentieth day of the month came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying. Verse 2 says speak down to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel governor of Judah and to Joshua the son of Jehozadak the high priest and to the residue of the people saying now you remember that it was Zerubbabel who was a key player in the rebuilding of the second temple he was the governor of Judah but this message is not only coming to the rulers of Judah but it's coming to the high priests who happened to be Jehoshadak at the time. But look who else it is addressing. The residue of the people. Now this may be an unfamiliar term. Because in the New Testament it uses the word remnant. So in other words it's talking to us as well. Verse 3 says who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory. And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison as nothing? Now, of course, we're talking about the second temple and it's comparing it to the first temple, the temple built by Solomon, like the Ark and like the pyramids probably were, was built by the hands of angels. You can read all about that over in a book called The Testament of Solomon. Solomon had plenty of angelic help building that first temple and so here our father is asking them to compare what the first temple would look like to the second temple but now we can take this a step further and compare what the third temple would look like in comparison to them both of course the third temple being a spiritual temple built on the hearts of humanity Verse 4 says, Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, and Jehozadak, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. They're talking about building this temple. Now, this is Hermas Academy. Guys, this channel has grown over the years per the instructions given in the book called The Shepherd of Hermas. I would advise you guys to go and read that book and afterwards come over and check out some of the many classes that my wife and I have done on The Shepherd of Hermas because it tells us how this tower shaped temple will be constructed talking about the third temple built on our hearts it's not going to be built out of brick and mortar it's going to be built out of the spirit of man but just like if you were out there mining for stones in the physical you must understand that our stones which is the spiritual representation of the status of our heart must be perfect in order to go into this temple and it is only the shepherd of Hermas that teaches us 
how it is that we are to make our stones perfect. I will go as far as to say that unless you get that information by intuition, you're going to have to read, study, and understand the Shepherd of Hermas if you ever intend on surviving the tribulation and going into the kingdom of heaven. Anybody whose stone is not perfect as described in the book called the Shepherd of Hermas may see the kingdom of heaven but they will not be able to go in but anyway let's go on verse 5 says according to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt and so my spirit remaineth among you fear ye not now the part of this verse that I would bring out is how he's talking about the word that he covenanted with us Again, he's talking to the governors, he's talking to the high priest, and he's talking to the remnant. So he's talking to us as well. And he was also talking with us when he made this covenant with us that we read about over there in the book of Exodus chapter 20 through chapter 24, verse 7. That is the book of the law. Of course, the harlot church likes to change the definitions of words in order to fit their false doctrine so when they use the word law they're talking about the entire Pentateuch or Torah which is the first five books of the Bible they do that to increase the burden and make it so that good-hearted people believe that it is impossible to actually keep the law they make it sound like it includes dietary laws and sacrificial laws and all of those traditions that was also passed down by Moses like I said that is the harlot church trying to lead many astray which it is actually doing a lot of people are falling for that trick and teaching what they call the doctrine of liberty which means that they can break any of the commandments they want and not ever worry about repentance because they will be flown away off the planet before any atonement or restitution is made that is what the book of revelations is talking about when it says to come out of her to come out of that harlot religion in reality we see over here in malachi in chapter 4 and many other places in the scripture mind you that it is actually the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments that was given in Horeb that makes up the law. That is the book of the covenant we talked about a second ago, which is Exodus chapter 20 through 24 verse 7. I would highly advise you to read that book if you haven't done so already because that is the law that is the covenant that is the contract that we're under those are the rules and the instructions given to us to help us to survive the tribulation you see that there in verse 5 where it talks about how he will send Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord well that great and dreadful day of the Lord is imminent at this point and this Elijah, the prophet that he's talking about, is that covenant angel that you read about over there in Exodus chapter 23, as well as Daniel chapter 12. But let's go on. You see down in verse 6, it says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once in a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And this is the focus of this class because he is actually talking about an earthquake. Not only a regular earthquake that shakes the earth, he is talking about a shaking of the heavens as well, and the sea, and the dry land. This earthquake is shaking everything. And the reason why we bring this up now is because. This word of the Lord came to Haggai on 21st day of the seventh month, which, like we said, corresponds with October the 9th. 
Now, am I saying that we would have a global earthquake on October the 9th? Well, of course I hope not. But one thing about it, I will be sleeping in a tent, Father willing, on October the 9th. I would advise you to be sleeping in a tent on October the 9th as well. But let me show you some other things here. Talking about earthquakes, I want to bring you over to what's called the Third Testament of the Bible. This is the third part of the book that we call the Bible, which you had the Old Testament that was given to Moses as humanity was making a change back there after the days of Egypt and the New Testament of the Bible that you got by way of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John when humanity was about to make another change back there during the time of Jesus or Yehoshua HaMashiach well we have received a third testament of the Bible as humanity is about to enter what we call the millennial age that thousand year reign in which our Christ will rule over the planet that time that starts after this tribulation event that we are in now these are a new set of instructions necessary to our understanding so that we can live in and survive whereas Moses gave us the law the Messiah gave us love it is Elijah who is giving us the light or the ability to understand spiritual matters such as intuition our conscious telepathy and such you can find a link to this book in the description of this video but down here in chapter 55 of the third testament of the Bible which is called the purification of the world and humanity in the judgment this is the chapter that describes all of or most of the apocalyptic events that we are expecting and when we jump down here in verse 7 it talks about this earthquake it talks about it in verse 70 as well but let's get to that in a second let me read verse 7 it says when those chosen by me find themselves reunited round my law the earth and the stars will be shaken and in the skies there will be signs because at that instant the voice of the divine spirit surrounded by the spirit of the just of the prophets and the martyrs will judge the spiritual and material realm this is talking about the earthquake it's even given us the timing of the earthquake if you understand the elements of this verse so let's look at some of these you see right here where it says when those chosen by me this it is we should recognize as either the chosen elect the bride of Christ or the 144,000 either way is talking about those individuals who have been reuniting themselves around the law over the years now let me show you something about when that actually started you remember that tetrad that we saw back there in the sky in about 2014 those four blood moons that fell on feast days over the course of about two years that was a wake-up call for many of the father's people we've had testimony after testimony of people who have testified that they started to become reunited around the law during that time in other words they started doing stuff like reading the book of the covenant and more importantly they started keeping the covenant you can even witness my experience as I was introduced to the Mosaic law if you go back to one of the first classes that you will find on our channel called an introduction to Mosaic law this is where we looked at a website called jufact.org and the 613 laws that are contained in the Old Testament and compared them verse by verse to what the scripture says. 
but I wasn't the only one. If you do your research, you can find that this was a wide, even global sweeping event that took place amongst the children of the Most High who started to become reunited around the law. One of the things that we did to reunite ourselves around the law was we started to actually keep the Holy Feast Days. As it is part of the Book of the Covenant, it is necessary to keep these feast days in order to be reunited around the law. I, for one, during the year 2014, 2015, started keeping these feast days correctly. It was actually in 2014 in which I had my first tabernacling experience where I actually slept in a booth for seven days. Again, I'm not trying to draw any attention to myself. I don't think I'm special at all. I think millions of people around the world experience this same event based on the testimonies, the stories, even the videos and other channels that have talked about this over the years. Well, looking at this spreadsheet table that I put together, which includes a lot of prophecies and the timing of these prophecies, you can see that 2014 was a very special year. It was actually the time when his people started reuniting themselves around the law. So you say, could this really go down? Could we have this global earthquake that promises to shake down every idol on the planet? Look back over here at the third testament of the Bible. It says, when those chosen by me find themselves reunited by the law, it says, then the earth and the stars will be shaken and in the sky there will be signs. So is this the end of this tabernacling period when these chosen individuals have been reuniting themselves around the law? I guess we're about to find out, ain't we? Because we're not talking about no small event here. Let me show you the significance of this earthquake that we are talking about. You see that later on in chapter 55. In fact, down in verse 69, it says three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear and one quarter only shall remain as a refuge for those that survive the chaos. Three quarters of the earth is going away during this earthquake that we're talking about. This is whole continents that are disappearing. You see over here in the book of Revelation and chapter 6, when we drop down and look at what it talks about as far as the sixth seal, when it's talking about the sixth seal is when it's talking about the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig that cast of her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Then it goes on to say, and the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So you have the stars of heaven shaken and you have every mountain and island moved out of their places. Looking back at what the third testament says that all corresponds with what we see over there in verse 7 where it says the earth and the stars will be shaken. And in the sky there will be signs. Well, you see what happens after this event takes place. It says, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? This is the event that wakes up all of humanity and makes them realize that we are in the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Talking about the sixth seal.
over there in the book of Revelations and we've done plenty of classes on the seals you can see classes that we've done where we've used the scripture including the third testament of the Bible to unlock the seals and decode their meaning we are in the sixth seal now here at Coach in the Fight we feel it is necessary to back up everything we say by way of scripture even though we have dreams like the other channels, we have intuition like the other channels, none of that really means much to us unless we can find the verses to actually back it up. Well, let's look at right here verse 70. It says, do not be confused because before the closing of the sixth seal, great things shall happen. The heavenly bodies shall show great signs. The nations of the earth shall lament and of this planet three quarters shall disappear. And one quarter only will remain in which the seed of the Holy Spirit shall grow as new life. This is talking about humanity's new existence. It's also talking about occurring at the closing of the sixth seal, which we are currently in right now. And like we said, we can prove that by way of scripture. We've done that in several videos so I just wanted to bring that to you guys attention again it's not my intention to get you guys scared my intention is to draw your attention to the law and its necessity as far as surviving this tribulation the church age is about over playtime is about over it's time to get reunited around the law Unless, of course, you have no intention on surviving the tribulation. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. Again, my intent is to draw your attention to the law. Guys, get in a tent. It is not too late. I should remind you guys of the parable of the laborers that you can read over in books like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This is the parable in which the individuals were brought out into the labor field to work the vineyards. And the ones who got there late in the evening with one hour of service got the same pay as those who had been there for 12 hours. That should encourage you that it is not too late to actually start doing the right thing. And that right thing is becoming united around the law. If you got something out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Consider subscribing to our channel and leave a comment. Shalom.